diplomatic or political meanings in Vietnam until the 1950s during the darkest days of Cold War, Winston Churchill coined the term summit. So notable meetings include those of Roosevelt, Churchill, and Ibaka head leaders or state leaders in World War II. However, um, the term summit hindi siya commonly, commonly used not until yung Geneva Summit yung saan nagkaroon na um, meeting yung Big Four na US President Prime Minister ng Britain, ng Britain uh, Premier ng Soviet, ng Soviet and then Prime Minister ng France and then during the Cold War uh, when the American President joined President joined with Soviet or Chinese counterparts. Ah, uh, yung event na yun tinawo siya ng media or nilibre siya ng media as some meetings. And before, marami na rin naging conference na masasabi natin some meetings yung tawag kagaya na uh, simula ng World War II kagaya na US Britain Conference, Moscow Conference, Second Moscow Conference, um, Atlantic Conference, at Grand Pong Conference. Summit Diplomacy is first used in Geneva by Winston Churchill. It is an international meeting of heads of state or government in an effort to reach broad members of agreement. It is an instrument of negotiated settlement of outstanding issues and it is also defined as a meeting of political leaders at the highest level regardless of frequency to negotiate pressing issues. So ayun, yung summit na summit diplomacy na tinatawag natin is meeting siya ng mga matataas na officials na, or mga heads ng state or ng government para madiscuss yung issues. Tapos, ang, el, ang key element kasi nito is dapat nag-meet kayo ng face-to-face or may personal kayo na contact sa isa't isa. And dapat kasi is yung highest na official if possible. Then, meron din palang ano, three types of summit. First is serial summit or the high frequency gatherings. Example is yung World Economic Forums. Next is the ad hoc summit or it is characterized by issue-specific meetings. Example is Earth Summit and the last is Exchange of View Summit or organized by nations to foster mutual understanding. Example naman is yung Bermuda Summit na pinropose ni Winston Churchill. Then, uh, personal, ay, personal, Summit diplomacy can be bilateral, multilateral, regional, or worldwide. And yung mismong, ano kasi nito is, mismong goal ng summit diplomacy is to preserve its useful role. However, the summit must be constantly under development and reform. So yung ano, summit diplomacy is, ano, dapat may constant siya para ano dapat dumadaan siya sa changes, sa mga reforms, sa developments para hindi masayang yung ano yung essence ng mismong ano summit diplomacy. We're going to discuss about summit diplomacy. First, we're going to define diplomacy. Diplomacy is a conduct of government official of negotiation and relation between nation and summit is a strategic conversation that brings different perspective within a system together to talk about the big picture and big questions so summit diplomacy is uh, we can say that it's a meeting with the highest head officials to talk about the uh, agreement then um, for our daily lives the example of summit to simplify it is having date together with your 
future partner to pursue him or her. And having a business meeting, you're trying to negotiate to have a great agreement and or simply selling a used car. For those, ano, for those situation, you're going to have to pursue to have a negotiation and to get a better agreement. And summit coined by term co uh, the term summit coined by Winston Churchill. It it means summit from our the root Latin word summon meaning the highest. In old French, it became some or in a demotive form summit that got borrowed into english in the 15th century as summit and originally it could refer to a topmost part of anything be it at the crowns of someone's head or at the peak of the mountain before there was no political or diplomatic meaning ng summit kumbaga yung summit yun lang siya, yung tukto ko lang siya, kumbaga literal na summit lang siya. Pero si Winston Churchill, binigyan niya yun ng international parlance noong 1950. Tinawag niyang summit yung mga calling meetings ng mga international leaders. Tapos, kasi ito talaga yung um, medium nila para makapag-usap, para makapag-ayos sila yung mga problema ng mga iba't ibang bansa. Although, hindi naman lahat ng summit meetings is nag-lead sa diplomatic success, ginagamit pa rin nila to kasi ang majority sa kanila is naniniwala na ay naniniwala na yung summit meetings is mas makakatulong sa para mas mapag-usapan yung mga problema nila. So, 30 years earlier, may keynote si Lloyd George. Ito yung keynote niya. If you want to settle a thing, you see your opponent, talk with him, and the last thing to do is write him a letter. Kasi para, para rin naman yung sa, nabawa, dito sa totoong buhay, nabawa, maraming kayong misunderstanding, or maraming kayong pinag-uusapan. Kausapin mo siya ng personal, and then, Kung hindi niya maayos, or meron kayong hindi pinagkasundaan, pwede niyo pa siyang, kumbaga pwede niyo pa siyang hilutin, kumbaga sa grade, pwede niyo pa siyang hilutin, pwede niyo pa siyang pag-usapan, tapos yun daw yung last thing na pwede mong gawin. Sumulit ka na lang ng letter. At yung nga lang, yung sinabi ni Lloyd George na yun, para naging modus operandi siya ng mga political leaders. Salamat sa mga... Uh, method ng mga professional diplomat. Kaya nung 1945, yung summit, mas makilala siya sa north, sa west, sa east, at saka sa south. Sa buong mundo, mas makilala na siya yung summit. Pero majority pa rin sa mga leaders, na mas naniniwala pa rin sila na pag personal yung pinag-uusapan yung mga problema, is mas advantage na nila yun. Kasi kapag through letters, Minsan, pwede yung maging barrier kasi hindi naman pare-parehas ng language which can lead to misunderstanding. Halimbawa na lang is yung meeting ni Mac Halimbawa na lang is yung meeting ni Mac Millan sa ni de Gaulle. Kasi na mas masyado siyang naniwala din sa French masyado siyang naniwala din sa French language skills niya yung sinabi niya hindi na daw na kailangan ng interpreter. Tapos yun na nga rin misunderstanding na yun. Mas hindi siya nakatulong dun sa Max Milan and the Gaia veto ng Britain first application for membership. Although, mahirap siya i-measure kung success yung summit rin, madali naman siyang makilala kasi itong form ng dialogue na to is meron siyang distinct diplomatic function. Kumbaga kasi flexible siya. Kaya, mas ginagamit siya at mas nakilala siya sa iba't ibang part ng mundo. Good evening, Toma. Misal, ako po si John Marquillian. Ako po yung magbibigay ng example ng Summit Diplomacy. Ito. Ang bibigay ko pong example is um, ASEAN Summit po. Yung, hindi po pag-attend ni Duterte ng ASEAN Summit noong 2016 is nagbigay po ng doubt sa maraming allied country natin na nagda-doubt sila sa capabilities ng Philippines and saka nag, uh, 
um, nagda-doubt na din po sila kung bakit hindi po umaattend yung ating president sa ganong mga importanteng pagpupulong po. And then, yung ASEAN Summit po kasi is a major um, meeting or negotiation between ano, major countries of Asia po. So, bali, kailangan po is mahalaga po talaga na nandun po yung bawat representative or president na inimbitahan para dumalo sa ASEAN Summit. And ASEAN Summit din po is parang nagbibigay din po ng daan para sa mga um, negotiation na mas magpapalawak ng economies ng bawat isa po. And um, Philippines not attending ASEAN Summit is parang parang nakakabastos din po sa allied countries natin na they are um, parang in, ano sa kanila po importante yung yung ASEAN Summit din parang sa atin binabaliwala lang natin which is parang nagdoubt sila sa mga pagnegotiate sa Philippines po and then ang hindi po pag-attend dito Duterte is parang nagbigay din po ng way or way of doubts or room of doubts sa allied countries na bakit hindi umatin yung Philippines ay eh, isa sila sa um, biggest resources na pinagkukuna ng Asia bakit hindi sila um, bakit hindi umatin ng Philippines since sila yung isa sa mga biggest contributor or biggest um, parang nagde-demand na din po yan Good evening po, Ma'am Ma Giselle. So, my topic for today would be the definition of the personal um, diplomacy, okay? So, what is personal diplomacy? From the word itself, personal, okay? So, it actually means that we have, um, for example, we have here two different states and they will um, engage with, this, with each other to, um, they will exchange uh, um, diplomatic agents and um, and they will tackle national interest and for the security of uh, their sovereign states, okay? So, just an elaboration for this one, Mom Giselle, okay? So, for personal, um, for personal diplomacy, so, balik tayo dun sa word na personal. What, what do we mean by personal, okay? So, two different states, meron silang different heads. Um, for example, um, as what is um, happening right now uh, with regards to the um to what do you call this one um the philippines and russia so nangyari na po yun um recently na nagpapadala nagkakaroon tayo ng parang um visiting pagdating sa mga heads of states and doon pa lang po doon sa pagbisita ng ating presidente sa sa russia itself sa russia uh, sa russia itself sa bansang russia is nagkakaroon na po tayo na tinatawag nating personal diplomacy doon, pinag-uusapan nila yung mga national interests natin, kung paano natin madadepensahan, kung sakasakaling, kung sakasakaling magkakaroon man ng gera uh, na involve ang isang country, is kung paano natin tutulungan yung country na yun. Okay po. So that, um, basically, yun yung, uh, yun yung essence ng personal diplomacy. Um, the receiving state, uh, and the sending state, is nakikipag, uh, directly communicating to the receiving state. So, yung po yung i-add ko is, ano, yung dalawang state pa na nag-negotiate is ano po, parang um, they are setting their goals to um, strengthen their bonds to para po masolusyonan yung mga problema ng bawat isang bansa sa po sportahan na rin po yung moral diplomacy ng bawat bansa. So another example is the diplomacy between Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin. So si Churchill is a siyang uh, United Kingdom Prime Minister at the same time is a siyang bully na aristocrat. And si Roosevelt naman, siya yung US President that time. Uh, hate na hate niya talaga yung British Empire. And then si Stalin naman, uh, responsible siya for uh, for the murder of millions of his own citizens. They don't trust each other but wala silang choice kundi makipag-alyansa sa isa't isa. Um, in 1943, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin were gathered in Tehran to plan their strategy on winning the World War II. Ito po ngayon ay about 
personal diplomacy and magbibigay na rin po ang example. Para sa akin po, personal diplomacy, yung leader ng Pilipinas at China ay may naganap na pag-uusap purely personal. Yung dalawang leader ng Pilipinas at China, yung baga sila sila, and they got engaged in conversation. Tapos papasok na dun yung personal diplomacy. Kung baga parang may negotiate, negotiate din ang nangyari. Uh, example ko dito is yung pagbisita ni Pangulong Duterte sa Russia for the second time. Hindi ko na matandaan yung date na yun. And nag-usap sila and nag-negotiate sila. Hello Ma'am Giselle. So magbibigay po ng example ng personal diplomacy. So, from the word itself, personal diplomacy, ibig po sabihin nun is the two leaders, uh, personal po silang mag-uusap. For example na lang po, uh, yung kay Donald Trump, tsaka yung kay Kim Jong-un. So, silang dalawa po yung great example ng pag-establish ng personal diplomacy. Yung dalawa po, nakapag-establish po ng kanilang relationship by sending letters at inamin po yun ni Trump sa crowds. So, may ginawa sila na mga bagay upang makapag-establish ng relationship gaya ng mga handshakes at puminsan po, nilalait din nila yung mga kalaban nilang bansa. So, kumbaga parang hindi formal yung ginagawa nila pero may diplomasyang nabubuo, nabubuo sa pagitan ng dalawang leaders.